When it comes to the luxury property market in the UK, it's no secret that Cheshire is home to some of the most beautiful and impressive homes in the country. Not only has it become a hotspot for world famous footballers and celebrities, but compared to London, you can get double, if not triple, your money's worth. And that is why today we are in Altrincham and I'm going to be taking you inside this £3.75 million home just behind me. I'm Jasmine and you're watching The Luxury Home Show. We're going to kickstart the tour here at the exterior of the property where Tom insisted I stood in the middle of this turning circle. We have plenty of space for parking, up to 10 vehicles, but if that's not enough, we do have a double car garage just behind me. Now to access the property, we have a very grand entrance through these automated scissor gates and on either side we have the caps both worth £20,000 and then we have pedestrian access as well and a retaining wall dug very deep into the ground. Privacy is of the utmost important when it came to this plot, hence why we have such an elevated position. From the road, you cannot see the house whatsoever, but we also have hedge lines, trees and a wall here just for that bit of separation. And we're also at the end of a private road. It's really peaceful here. You can just hear the birds chirping, create such a calm and tranquil vibe. But let's talk about the exterior and the facade of the property. It's very striking. As you can see, it does have that traditional style, but a lot of modern touches. So we actually have this buff Cheshire brick, and then the stone masonry is all bespoke, and it's this gorgeous Fletcher Bank stone, which is really desirable in this area because of its color. It's not too light, not too dark, and it looks perfect. You can see all of the windows in this property. It's light is such a big aspect of this house. And I also love the kind of Tudor style paneling at the top. There's not too much of it, but you can just see it up there. We also have the cast iron down piping, so really sturdy, no leaks there. And yeah, I think that's about it at the exterior. So why don't you come on with me and I'll take you inside. Now we're just by the front door at the entrance to the property. I want to draw your attention to this portico, the same stone that comes all the way along the facade. And I really love this space because you have a skylight and a ceiling above. So you are protected from the rain here, but still so much light flooding in. Great little entrance to the house come on in through this really lovely door. I like the glass. Now, first up, we have some beautiful bespoke storage here for your shoes, just to keep everything nice and tidy. And then you'll notice the flooring is very striking. It's actually this European parquet oak flooring. The proportions are really great throughout this house. But before we head to the kitchen, I just want to point out this really lovely staircase. So it follows with that European oak. It kind of looks like the metal spindles you'd see on a staircase, but they've done that with wood. So the house is around 7,000 square feet. I'm going to take you through to the kitchen first. We have got around six, seven bedrooms. You'll see what I mean by that. Behind Tom, we have some of the living spaces and a stunning garden that I can't wait to show you. But like I said, follow me to the kitchen. Everything in here is handcrafted by Aisling and apparently this whole kitchen cost around £100,000. Let's start here at the central island where we have the quartz countertops that carries on over on the side as well. Miele integrated appliances and I'm a really big fan of this colour here. It's like a kind of greyish green. Now I get a lot of comments about my colour site apparently. I see colors that no one else sees, so let me know if you see that too. <laughs> I love the addition of this nice gas hob instead of an induction hob, you know me. And then over on this side, we have our Kuka hot water tap with the stainless steel sink, which is really deep, by the way. Evo line charging points here, very durable, much better than the ones you kind of pull out, I think, more hard wearing. And then we have our freezer behind this one and then fridge on this side. Now, one thing I really love in the kitchen is this lovely contrast it has to the walnut. So if I come back around this side, you can see we've got tons of cabinetry here, which is all solid walnut. And when you open them up, you can really smell it. This would be your little spice shelf. I love that. And then let's open another one up. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful pantry through there. And I love the pendant lights we have above this island. It's actually Ralph Lauren and a lot of the lighting throughout the home is designer lighting, not cheap, but definitely it looks good. So I'll try point out it as we go along. Okay, let's head into this living space. We have access to the patio, which I'll show you a little bit later. 
but how bright is this space? Oh, you've got dual aspect and the whole point of these rooms and the whole house is really to draw your attention out to that view because it is stunning. The garden is beautiful. You can catch a little glimpse of the four to 500 year old oak tree at the back as well. Now, I love the skylight in here. The developer really tried to put as many skylights and windows in as he could. We've got the uh, TV here on the wall playing the luxury home show. So if you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe and check out this tour we just did in London. Great space throughout here. And what's even better is through here. We actually have a secondary kitchen. So come on in. This whole space could definitely act as a separate self-contained annex. So down here, this is your secondary kitchen. Now I'm pretty sure we've been to some London flats where this is your main kitchen, to be honest. So much space, the same standard runs throughout here as well. And we have some beautiful marble instead. Again, another skylight, and then you've also got access out to your garden. Now, as I come out of here, we have this utility section. My favorite feature has to be this little drawer you pull out. But yeah, two washers, two dryers, and then some more storage. Now, what I love about this part of the house is once you shut that door, like I said, it really just becomes this self-contained annex. So you have the kitchen. Behind you, we have a whole nother room, which the developer said could be a bedroom. You've got separate access to the property via there with this security door. And there's also an ensuite. The developer also said he had quite a well-known footballer come and view this house and said that room just there would be great for a gym, backing out onto the garden as well. But in addition to that, we have the access to the garage here and above that is another bedroom with some really gorgeous antico flooring. I think the tiles throughout here are a very interesting choice, very modern in comparison to the traditional kitchen, which I really like throughout this whole area. But if we come now into the study, which is right opposite, we switch back to that lovely parquet flooring. We've got bespoke cabinetry throughout there for your wardrobes, desk situated perfectly, outlooking the front. This is such a cool art piece. We actually toured this developer's, uh, another one of his homes a while ago. So I'll link that in the top right corner because you'll see an appearance from this guy again. And then we also have an ensuite through here. This could definitely be another ground floor bedroom, hence the ensuite. And then we have another one of those Ralph Lauren feature lights. We'll see more of those later. Before we leave this room, just want to point out this little cupboard here. It's full of all the security and the comms, so good access to that. Very high security along this whole house, really, and just the whole plot. Okay, to my... Oh, actually, I'm going to take you in here because I really love the mirror. So we have our bathroom down here, Duravit sink, but check out this mirror. So you've got the circular mirror, but it's like hung by like a leather strap. Really just nice vintage effect. I don't know if you guys can see it, but he's also added this gold trim just around the top of these tiles here. So it's now time to cross the great entrance hall. It's such a spacious area. But before I go and show you the living rooms, I want to point out this snug. It's so warm and cozy in here. I think it's one of the smallest rooms, so it does heat up quite quickly, but I personally would love that. Doors leading into your patio, which I really love, and the garden views. Come on out, I'm gonna take you into the living space. This is so big. Look at this space. Let's go into this one first. So this side is more of the formal living room. Now, this open concept room was actually part of the original house, hence why these ceilings are a little bit lower, but I think that works really nicely in this reception part of the room. It's a very formal space, like I said, you can see the designer aspects coming in. We've got the Hermes art blanket, and then these Ralph Lauren kind of flower lights. Very different, I've never seen a feature light like that before. They cost around 4,000 pounds each, I believe. We have the obviously center of attention, the fireplace with the log burning stove underneath. And now this whole room, we were speaking to the developer and it wasn't originally gonna be open concept. He wanted two separate rooms. So there was going to be a TV there, but in a formal space, people don't want TVs anymore. It's a great place to have a conversation. You can see here where the border would have been. But as we move into this space, you can see it is a little bit more informal. It's more casual, it's a bit more of a hangout spot. And we have this beautiful lantern skylight above that is tinted, so no UV rays are coming through here. It's a bit cooler than, say, the other room on the other side. And I like the difference. It's still one open plan concept room, but that does feel a lot more intimate down there, and this feels a bit more open and chatty. We've got the TV on the wall there. And then behind this side, 
fun fact, where the courtyard is, it was actually supposed to be another room connecting these two spaces, but I really love how they've got that separation so people can be cooking in the kitchen, you know, someone could be watching football here on a Sunday afternoon, and you can still communicate to each other across, but it is separated and you do have your own space. Now I'm actually gonna take you upstairs and show you some of the bedrooms. So coming up onto the first floor, we switch from the wood to this really soft velvet carpet from Westex. And above the stairs, we have this beautiful pendant light, once again by Ralph Lauren, but it's in this soft chocolate leather. Really subtle, and I like the neutral color palette. So this is the hallway, but we're gonna back up all the way so I can show you the principal suite first. One of my favorite features throughout this room has to be the vaulted ceilings. I think it adds so much character to the room even though this is the extended part of the house. I love the picture window looking out to the garden, just really frames it all, it just looks stunning. So this section here actually used to be a balcony but the developer extended it out to make room for the walk-in wardrobe. I'll show you that in a glance in a second. And this is very interesting, don't you think? It's kind of, it's a hanger, essentially. So you've got trousers, hat, jacket, but I think it looks like a little man, like a little alien man, in my personal opinion. Bed in the middle, you know, we've got a lot of space in here. So just by you now, we have the TV, it pulls out, but we do have this recess just here. So this could be used either for some extra wardrobes or a TV to put on the wall. So you've got options, but I think maybe extra wardrobes personally because I would need this all for myself. So we haven't got any wardrobes in here at the moment. I think that's a wise choice because when someone does move in, they're gonna wanna style their own walk-in wardrobe. I mean, that is every woman's dream. So yeah, best leave that plain, I'd say. And then if we come around the corner, we have our bathroom. I really like the linear format of this ensuite. Makes it feel so much more spacious. I'm gonna start at this end where we have the walk-in shower. Now all of the kind of tiles in the bathrooms you see are from Italy. They look very striking in this one. I think this is the only one that has this though, so you're special if you're in here. And yeah, we have the nice waterfall shower and the detachable one too. So we have our bath in the middle and twin basins. Now the bathrooms are Durabit, they have the Durabit fittings, but they're actually designed by a French architect and designer called Philip Stark. But let me take you out. Now, fun fact, we have access to our loft through here. It's all been boarded. The developer said there's around 1,500 square feet of storage up there. It spans the whole house, which is incredible, really. No small attic. But as we come into our next bedroom, you can see we have bed in the center with this interesting recess above, really nice ambient lighting through there. And I also wanna point out the actual main light fittings in this room, they're very small. The developer said he wanted this house to feel very, you know, ambient, no big lights. I mean, who turns the big lights on these days? So come through into the ensuite where we have the Jurovit sink, once again, basin I should say, and then the shower. I really like it, it's tucked into this corner. It's kind of like hidden away. It's like some little room. See? <laughs> but before we leave this room, there is something I want to point out at the windows. So if you follow me, another great design choice were these PVC sash windows. So if they were wood, they would receive a lot of damage from the sun as it is a south facing garden. So this facade of the house is in constant sunlight. So these are really hard wearing, really durable and weather resistant but come on back out into the hallway. Now there are two further smaller bedrooms, for example, one here. They're unfurnished at the moment, so we're not going to show you those. I will, however, point out that the borders to the room aren't electric blue. It's not a design choice. They're just the covers to stop any scruff or damages. But I am now gonna take you into the garden and let's take a look at the house from the back. So I'm coming out of the kitchen now to this courtyard area where we have a beautiful dining table, this resin set flooring, and we even have a bunch of outdoor plugs. So this is a great spot uh, for some barbecuing, some outdoor dining. But I really wanna pay attention to this lawn space at the back of the garden. So we come up the steps, 
past this little wall. Oh, I'm gonna step onto the grass in my heels. And we just have so much space. So this is a 0.7 acre plot. Let's have a spin so you can see. How stunning is this? So all of this lawn space, and we have a four to 500 year old oak tree at the back there, as well as all of these mature trees around that were recently planted. I think there was around a hundred thousand pounds spent on the landscaping of this garden to ensure it stayed a really private plot. And you can really see that here with all the trees around. And also the fact that it backs onto the Dunham Forest Country Club and golf course. So there's no one behind you at all. When we were speaking to the developer, he said the architect was thinking you could put a pool here or even build out an annex and have an indoor pool. So there's so much potential still with this property. And then all the way at the back, next to the tree, we have an outbuilding that's currently being used as a gym, but it could be an office or whatever you want it to. There's water, electric, heating, all supplied there. So it's a perfect little escape at the back of your very magical garden, I would say. When a developer is looking for the perfect plot, they follow this golden formula, which is all to do with the proportion of the house to the garden. So in this case, we have the house and the frontage taken up one third, and then the garden takes up two thirds at the back. And that is known as this golden ratio, especially with luxury houses. And this plot is perfect for that. And that's what made this whole area so appealing to the developer. And that about brings us to the end of this tour. Remember, if you haven't already, you can join and become a member of the Luxury Home Show. You just have to click the little join button next to subscribe down below, and we bring you pretty much everything from behind the scenes content to extended interviews and a lot more coming soon. So don't forget to do that and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Hi everyone, Tom here, and welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Home Show. Today you're joining Jazz and myself in Hampstead, a community favored by some of Britain's most famous faces. It has some of the most expensive real estate in the London area. Within its boundaries, there are more millionaires than any other area in the United Kingdom. 